This is brought to you by the Alumni Association of PISJES. Hey guys, today we'll be talking about friction. So, first of all, let's talk about friction. It's a very common word. So friction, as we know from the earlier videos, is a contact force. A contact force is a force that comes in action only when two objects are in contact or two objects are pressing against each other. Let's say this is the mass and this is the table. So unless these two are in contact, friction force would not be acting on this mass. Now friction force is an opposing force. Friction force always opposes the velocity of the object. Let's say we have an object in this direction. For example, let's, uh, we have an object of mass m and this object is moving in this direction with a velocity of v. It's moving in this direction. So the friction force would always be acting in the direction opposite to the velocity. Let's say this is friction. This is a symbol of friction force. It would always be acting in the direction of against the velocity, against the direction of velocity. Let's say this is a mass and its velocity is in this direction and its acceleration is in this direction. So many would get confused as to where the friction force would be acting. But always remember, the friction force does not care about the acceleration. It doesn't care whether the acceleration is, this direct, is in this direction or in this direction. It doesn't care about that. All it cares about is the velocity of the object. And since the velocity of the object is in this direction, the friction force would be in this direction irrespective of the direction of the acceleration. So always remember that the friction force is an opposing force and it opposes the velocity of the object, not the acceleration. Remember that. Also, friction force is a viscous force. A viscous force means that it produces heat whenever this friction force is acting somewhere. Uh, you, just, you can just see the example if you just rub your hand uh, on the table and just slide it on the table, you will feel your hand getting hot. That is because the friction force is generating heat. So any force that generates heat is a viscous force and friction force is a viscous force. Now friction force depends on the mass of the object. The more the mass of the object the more the friction acting across it. So if you have a scenario here, let's say the, this is just one table and this is one mass here which is small m and there is one mass here with a bigger m. If they are sliding on the same table, let's say if they are sliding on the same table, Uh, all right with a velocity in this direction and this one let's say in this direction too so the friction force that is acting on M let's say obviously it would be in this direction let's let's call it fr1 and the friction force acting on this would be acting in this direction because it's always opposing the velocity it's called it fr2 so since the mass of this box is greater than the mass of this box the friction that would be acting against this box would be more than the friction acting on this box. So we can say that FR2 would be greater than FR1 on the same table. Obviously we have to keep something constant. I mean if we change the table then it would be illogical. We cannot compare unless we have the same table. So friction 2 would be greater than friction 1. So that is friction. Now 
let me take an example of friction let's say uh, I am I have a card here and it has wheels here and it has a mass of say 10 kilograms and I am pushing this card pulling this card uh, let's say in this direction with a force of 100 newtons all right and this card has an acceleration of 2 meters per second square and it's moving in this direction it's accelerating in this direction as well however since we know that it's moving there will be a friction force and this friction force would be acting opposite to the direction of velocity so here will be our friction force now let's see if I want to find out the friction force so let me just see our formula formula says F net is equals to MA the net force the total force I know one force is in this direction which is 100 newtons and let's say this is let's say force of pulling it's in this direction and force of friction is in this direction so we'll make an arbitrary axis here and I would call this one as positive the one on the right hand side is positive and the one on the left hand side is negative so this becomes positive and this becomes negative so this would simply become 100 minus friction force as in the net force would become 100 minus friction force I just added the two up this was this was in this direction so this become ne uh, negative this was 100 plus minus FR so this became the F net is 100 minus FR now you know the mass which is 100 ki uh, 10 kilograms and acceleration is 2 meters per second square just substitute uh, the uh, the values here in the formula this would become 100 minus FR is equals to 10 times 2 100 minus FR is equals to 20 just take it here and take it here 100 minus 20 is equals to positive FR the FR is 80 Newtons so the frictional force acting on this mass is 80 Newtons so you can see how you calculated this let's just take another example of friction force let's say we have a mass of 20 kilograms and I am pulling it in this direction with a force of let's say 100 newtons and there is a friction force that I know about and since the velocity is in this direction it's moving in this direction let's say the friction in this direction is 20 newtons all right so let's see what happens now I, I need to find out the acceleration of this block the acceleration of this block so let's see we'll have to find out since the formula says F net is equals to MA we'll have to find out the F net and for that we'll have to make our relative arbitrary axis and I would say that this side is positive in the x-axis and this side is negative so eventually this becomes positive and since this is in the left hand towards the left hand side this becomes negative so when I sum the two forces it would become 100 with a positive sign minus 2 minus 20 so the F net why is it minus 20 because it's in, it's in this direction so the F net becomes 80 newtons now just substitute in the formula 80 is equals to MA 80 divided by 20 is equals to A your A would be 4 meters per second square and it's always the acceleration is always in the direction of the resultant force and since the resultant force is a positive 80 newtons or the net force is a positive 80 newtons the acceleration was be, would be in this direction 4 meters per second square it's always in the direction of the resultant force so always remember 
that this can be the case. Now let me take a little complicated case here. Let me just take this color. Okay. Let's say here we have a box of say mass 10 kilograms and it's moving in this direction. It has a velocity in this direction. It's moving in this direction. However, there is, it was moving initially in this direction. Okay. And suddenly I came in and I pushed it in this direction. It was moving originally in this direction with a velocity of say 10 meters per second square. And suddenly I came in and I pushed it with my finger in this direction and applied a force of let's say 20 newtons. Now I applied a force of 20 newtons. Let's see what hap let's see what happens now. Let's see the acceleration now. So we know that there will be a friction force since it's against a table. Now what will be the direction of the frictional force? The direction of the frictional force is always opposite to the direction of the velocity irrespective of any other thing. So the direction of the frictional force is in this direction. Now if you find out the F net, you will have to first take the arbitrary axis because all both the forces are in this direction. Let's take this direction as positive. In this direction as negative. So this one would become 20 plus fr is equals to ma. So the mass is 10 and we know the ex uh, do we know the acceleration? Okay let's say uh, since the net force is in this direction in the you would know that the net that the net force would always be in this direction because both of them are in this direction. So let's say the acceleration in this direction is 4 meters per second square. So let's find out the frictional force acting on this direction, on this mass. So 20 plus fr is equal to mass is 10 kilograms times the acceleration, which is 4. Now, uh, this is your equation just simply 20 plus fr is equal to 40 fr is equal to 40 minus 20 and the friction force is 20 newtons so here was the case that the friction force was not in the direction opposite to the force being applied or the acceleration it was in the direction of the acceleration and in the direction of the force but it was opposite to the velocity and that is the condition of friction. It will always be in the direction opposite to the velocity. Now you can see the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. This means that the box would be decelerating because it's moving in this and the acceleration, there is something pushing at this point in this direction. So the acceleration is in the, towards the left hand side and the velocity is towards the right hand side. So this means that the box is decelerating. We always know that. So if I want to find the time when this box comes to a stop, I know the formula. There is only one relationship between velocity and acceleration. And that relationship is V minus U over T is equal to acceleration. What is V? V is the final velocity. So if I want, if my question is that find the time for the box to stop. So my final velocity should be zero. So this would be 0 minus u. u is the initial velocity. The initial velocity is 10. And I want to find out the time. And relative to this direction, this would be deceleration and not acceleration. So this would have, this would be a deceleration of 4 meters per second square or an acceleration of minus 4. So now just switch the formula. This would become 0 minus 10 divided by minus 4 is equal to t. Let, let me just take it here and this would become minus 10 over 4 is equal to t minus 10 over minus 4. Let's use your calculators and you would find that after 2.5 seconds the box will come to a stop 
Remember, the directions in these three, four vector quantities is very important. You have to make sure you have a clear understanding of how the directions are working. If the velocity and acceleration are in opposite direction, for that velocity, the box or the object is decelerating and it's not accelerating. So wherever you, you are putting it, in that case, whenever you are putting the acceleration and velocity in the formula, the acceleration will always have negative sign because this, for if it's in the opposite direction, it will make it come to a stop. And in that case, it would act as deceleration and not acceleration. 